50 games a month with at least 35 rapid and try and do 15 uh, the correspondence games. Okay, sounds good. And stay within, within those two. All right, I'm going to play with the volume on Zoom to see if that matters. I'm going to mute myself on Zoom right now. So you'll need to be uh, watching the stream. You don't have to watch it, but you need to listen to the stream. Okay? Yep. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to say something to you if you hear me respond. If you don't, then I'll know you're not hearing it. All right. So can you still hear me? John, are you there? John, this is a sound check. Are you there? All right, John, I wasn't hearing you. I didn't hear anything from you. Okay. So were you listening to the stream though? Yeah, and now it says it's not started yet. It's twelve fifty nine. So, yeah, it should have started because I started the stream. Okay. <laughs> the stream is live for like the last minute and fifteen seconds. So I usually start two minutes prior, and it's a two minute countdown. So if you go to my stream and just click on it, it should be live. You should see the starting at one p.m. and a countdown down to thirty. It stopped the countdown. Is at one twenty seven. Uh, very odd. So let's try. We'll go out and come back in again. Yeah. So I don't know if that froze on you, but yeah, we'll be starting in 17 seconds now, but that's okay. <laughs> and uh, Irv, are you online yet? Two, one, bing. All right, welcome everyone. Today is a lesson. Uh, we're going to have a lesson with Lemurf, uh, one of my students that is also uh, very, he's coming along, doing well. He is on Lee Chess. We're going to be using Lee Chess as we always do for our lessons. Uh, so this is Murph's uh, avatar above me. And we're trying out, we're still wrestling and playing around with what we're going to use for doing these lessons live on stream. So, uh, hey Murph, uh, so I'm right now projecting both for the Zoom. So Murph, hopefully you are still hearing me and um, Murph is using Zoom to talk back, but I'm not using any video to try to keep my CPU cycles down for now. I will be buying a new computer in the near future, hopefully. So Murph, can you hear me? Ah, don't hear Murph answering me. I'm sorry, I'm here. I'm answering you. Okay, thank you, Murph. Um, and my, I noticed my um, title for my thing is totally wrong. So now I have to try to update that. And don't know if it'll let me update it on the fly. Sometimes it doesn't seem to want to let me do that. And I need to change the language to English. Forgot to change all this for today. Let's see if that updates correctly on my stream. So, Irv, are you there? Oh, and you hear a delay on Twitch. All right, so then go ahead and mute the Twitch, Murph. And we just won't use the uh, Twitch for you to hear me. We'll just talk through Zoom. Uh, and if uh, Irv gets online, we'll have him check the volume, and I'll see if I can play with any of the settings. Hey, G. Dot Host. Good afternoon. Your volume is pretty good. All right, good. It's come, we'll see. We'll see if we uh, can make it work for what we're doing. And uh, G. Dot is going to be a student. We're going to do a one-on-one -on -one with him in the near future, but uh, not right this second, right? So. We're going to be doing, first we're doing, um, we're going to do another lesson. All right. Hey, LLMP, thanks for making it. Can you check the volume? Yes, I updated it now, um, Irv. I'm hoping it's correct because I changed it. I hope I don't have to start my stream over again. That would be annoying. Uh, but if I have to, I can end stream and then restart it right away. But that would be annoying if it still says the Spanish. I changed it a few moments ago. So... Um, I don't know how to even check if that's going to be right. I might have to end and then start over again. All right, so how's the vibe? Hey, thanks, uh, G. Dot. Thanks for the host. 
Thanks for the host. Um, I mean, for the pro sub. Thanks for the sub. So supposedly there's some kind of animation. Hopefully you saw something cool. I don't. I didn't see it. <laughs> but uh, Chris said he saw a uh, really cool animation. Thanks again for the subscription. That's very kind. All right. So uh, hopefully it doesn't still say Spanish. But maybe our next person who joins, we can ask him what it says. Uh, I tried to update the stream. I edited it. And let me know. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, Irv, if you want to leave the stream and then come right back and see what it says and see if the title still says Spanish. If it does, I will stop this stream and restart it quickly. So let me know um, if I need to do that, Irv. I appreciate it. All right. Um, but meantime, what we're going to be doing is working on a one-on-one -on -one lesson with uh, Murph. And Murph has some specific questions, but first I'm going to review uh, one of his most recent games. And we're going to look at what ways we think Murph can hopefully improve his game. And that's a nice one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And then we're going to watch Murph play a game. He'll challenge somebody either in the chat. Someone here can play Murph. Or he could play a random opponent on Lee Chess. We will all watch and observe. And Murph will turn off his um, speaker so he doesn't hear. Or I'll just mute myself on Zoom since Murph is not listening to me on Twitch. He's doing it straight through Zoom. I'll mute myself on Zoom, and that way Murph can't hear me, and because uh, you know we'll be commentating while he plays, and he doesn't want to hear us in his ear. And then we'll analyze that game together, and that'll be that's the lesson. We'll spend about an hour and a half doing that. All right. So, uh, Irv, uh, did you get to leave and come back? Hey, Flavio. Hola. Hey, Flavio. When you um, joined, did it? Did, is it still showing the title for this session as being uh, my Spanish lesson? Or is it now showing one-on-one -on -one lessons? Can you tell me, Flavio? Because I may need to leave and come back so it has the right title. It has one-on-one -on -one above the Smurf. Yeah, no, on that title, that's fine. Oh, excellent, Flavio, great. So uh, I learned a lesson today. If I change my stream information after the stream starts, it will eventually show up properly. So we're good to go. So let's get to work, Murph. We're gonna review your game. All right. Thank you, Flavio. You're awesome. Glad I made you a mod. Oh, I gotta make Irv a mod too. I, I feel bad if I don't make my own uh, flesh and blood a mod. So let's go ahead and give him mod status. And then I have three mods. Oh, it didn't let you raid. Okay, I'll double check that. There was only two, but I'll double check that and see how I can give you raid capabilities. Meantime, I am going to stop my preview to also save cycles, because I know that's supposed to help. Oh uh, yeah, loud feedback when Murph spoke. Okay, um, because I, I did see someplace I might be able to play with his, his audio levels. So I will play with that a little bit and see if that helps. But yeah, he, he does usually have a feedback issue in general um, with his computer. So Murph, if you want to, like you are, seem to be muted until you're ready to speak, that would help with the overall quality. All right. So let's see what we got going here. So Murph, you're, you're playing in E4 and I asked you, since this lesson, when you said you want to kind of like go on to the next step, you feel kind of stuck. I asked you what you felt more comfortable with, E4 or D4, since hopefully you've played both. I know you used to play D4 for a while. Um, and you said you like E4. And we'll talk about the, the problems with playing E4 as far as if you like to play the type of play you said you like, which is a little bit more patient than aggressive. So this is very, very classic. And if you play this, if we continue to play this, if this is one of the openings you choose to use, it'll be the Italian game, and we will look at the themes, the thematic moves and the themes behind the Italian game, not so much trying to memorize move after move after move theory. We're gonna look at just the thematic things that you'll run into. And if most of your opponents play this, then you're still good to go. Where you'll end up in a little bit of a quandary is if you play this, you still, um, and, I've, and I've said this before, white picks the family of opening. So if we choose the E4 family of opening for you, or the D4, you're going to have to still come up with major 
decisions or lines or themes that you want to play against the Sicilian because you're going to see that a lot. You're going to have to come up with lines you're going to play against the French. You're going to see that a lot. Against the Scandinavian, you're going to see that a lot more because a lot of the streamers, uh, these IMs that are telling, trying to teach openings to people, are convincing them that the Scandinavian is a good opening because even though the queen comes out early, uh, it's you know safe and they can develop their pieces and, and they can get into a, a, a static situation that they always know what it's going to look like. And so it's feasible and you're going to see that a lot. And then you are going to see the move that you saw, which is this move. Now you might see wacky moves too, like F4 on the first move, or this move, or even weird, weirder things. And those you'll just deal with, right? You'll just follow the principles and deal with the extraordinary ones. But the Sicilian, the French, the Carol Khan we didn't talk about, where this is the first move, um, you're going to have where this, these things happen, and you're going to want to know some lines or at least some understanding of the thematic play for each one of those because you're learning E4. So black, you only need to learn one opening against E4 and one against D4 because black actually dictates the opening unless, unless, like in this case, you just meet it equal, right? Then you're saying back to white, okay, what variation do you want to play? White played knight to F3. Black could play knight to F6 and say, let's play the Petrov. Black could play other things, center, I don't even know what this is called, but black could play here instead. So black can play other things other than knight to um, C6. So you don't necessarily still get into the Italian. But if you get this far and you can be in the Italian, that could be your main opening that you study and that you spend the most time on understanding the theory. But that's why I really... I'm not crazy about studying openings right now for you guys, even at this level. So the first thing uh, you want to think in your head, Murph, at this point, is that your opponent made a bad move. Why? It doesn't develop a piece, it doesn't uh, attack the center, and it weakens the king's side, and if he, ca if he castles over here, that's already a target. It's a weakness. Here's a weakness, and here's a weakness. Um, so you want to just think to yourself, eh, okay. Don't like that move for that guy. He's like keeping your knight from here or your bishop from here when you're not even threatening it yet. Now, it might be because he so badly wants to play the knight and has been eaten up by the fried liver before, so this is his way to stop the fried liver. But the problem is it's not developing a piece. So, Murph, you continue developing a piece. So you have three to one, but he gets to go, so he gets to catch up. And lo and behold, he does like bringing out the second knight first, so therefore, maybe that's why he did it to keep away the fried liver. But as you know, this is still weakening and not developing. So he basically gave you a chance to be ahead, and you are ahead. All right, so now you both are developing your bishops. Um, and again, if we were playing this through in a different way, we might look at some sacrifices for you because that pawn might be a target that we might be able to get at sooner rather than later, but we would look at lines that were pl plausible. But since you don't like to play risky and you'd rather play a little bit more patient and aggressive, we probably wouldn't look at those lines anyway. We'd probably look at lines around this. And this is fine, nothing wrong with it, good move. Uh, you're playing fine. So this is a mistake, a bad move. And uh, at, uh, this is humorous because Murph and I played a game almost exactly like it just the day before where I castled instead of this pawn move and then I moved my knight out here and I was distracted, I was talking, I was teaching, uh, answering somebody's questions and Murph took the free pawn, which he of course should and I told him, yes, verily, take the free pawn and what's funny though at this point is that um, I, I, you know, he was like, oh, you're just trying to trick me or test me and I was like, nope, I'm not trying to test you I just missed the free pawn and this guy was playing almost exactly the same opening the only difference is he hasn't castled yet. So then he uh, finally does castle, trying to get two protectors on this. Now, Murph, you're up a whole pawn, and I've already taught you that normally we don't do this sacrifice. We don't give the bishop, right? We don't take here with the bishop or the knight. Um, why? Because it'll be two pieces and a pawn for the rook, totally equal, but he gets two minor pieces, and you don't, right? You're down a piece. But this might be an exception, and why this might be an exception is because you got this pawn also. So now you're actually up two pawns for the piece. And then look at this move. I really like this move. 
So knight's got to move, right? Do we agree the knight got to move? Look, this knight is off on the side of the board, hitting very few squares. So this knight is out of the game. This bishop is undeveloped. And so he only has these two active pieces. The king is pretty much open. And we got that extra pawn. So this would be where I'd want you to say, you know, um, I know that normally I'm not going to trade two pieces for the um, piece in the pawn, normally. But I just got a free pawn. I can push this pawn next move. Now, you could take this way. Actually, you can still take this way. Uh, if knight takes your bishop, you get the queen, right? So you're still going to get this situation. And um, you just have to say, you know, that might be worth it because now I get this attack. The knight can't go here or here, free candy. Knight can't, can go here, 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 or here. That's it. And so most, uh, no, sorry, knight can't go here, free candy. So now the knight only has one of these moves. That's got to feel good for you, right? That should feel good for you. Um, we should have ways to hurt our opponent. So let's say the knight, Murph, let's say the knight goes to here. Okay, not blocking the king from running away, not sitting here on top of the queen. What move could you do next, Murph, do you think, to gain an advantage? Um, not really sure. Yeah, I think Flavio actually speaks Italian as well as other languages. So, yeah, you should say, uh, hi, hey, King, haven't seen you in a while. Welcome back. Um, so the queen is one of the things that I need to work with you, Murph, of we don't want to bring out the queen early or too early, but in certain situations like right now, you want to, you want to leverage that queen. So you should be, th you should be thinking checks. Um, one of the things I do like that uh, Gotham Chess Levy Roseman teaches is always look for checks first. And I call it chasing the king, right? So you should look for opportunities to chase the king. And so you have these two possible checks. And either check, so this check, you would assume he might push, he might push the pawn. You could take this pawn threatening the knight and you're, you're probably feeling pretty good no matter what else happens, right? I mean, his king is right out, right out in the open. And right now you're down, uh, how do we get down two pieces? What did I miss? Oh, two pieces for the rook. Two pieces for the rook. So we're going to free up this rook um, sometime soon. But so that's one option here. I mean, here. Well, now let me let me stop you for a second. Yeah, I did. I did see that. But the reason I didn't re mention that as a choice is because it's just sort of checking the king for checking the king's sake. Very we good. don't do that. Very good. Agreed. Now, agreed. Agreed. But this is how I want. You. If you look for that first then you might have uh, find other choices. So here's another one. Um, and King said, you know, you could go here. So here you might say, well, if he goes here, because we have to look at how he's going to defend, right? He can't put something right. in front because you get to take it off with the pawn. So now he, you know, we don't think he's going to come up here, right? That would be like kind of ridiculous. Um, so, you know, chances are he's going to go here. And you might say, oh, I get a check and I win the bishop. Right. So that's okay. A, I get back my piece and I'm still looking good because I, I, okay. I mean, I was equal on points. I was actually ahead on points. So that that would be one option. If he goes back to them here, then your check here is beautiful because guess what? He can't push the pawn. You just take the pawn and you win the knight. He still can't put anything in between. And so his king might come up here and other, you know, you, again, it's not chest to check at that point. You're looking pretty Good. You know, you got a night move, night move. Okay. But there is a forcing opportunity using the same uh, concepts. And so if you pushed here right away, chances are he's going to take. Right? I mean, if he wants okay. to back up, you're probably just fine. Then you just start pushing the rest of your pawns and get more ground and more territory. So chances are he takes, and then you do this check. And we have the double attack. And if you could snatch this piece, then you're up really a lot of material. So the point to all this story was, you know certain patterns. And you know 
the pattern that if you take here as black you shouldn't be worried because yes it's equal points but you are getting two minor pieces for the rook and the rook usually doesn't play until the end game so until you get to an end game and even if you did still two pieces versus that one rook is a good trade uh, but you got the pawn remember you have a free pawn and and your bishop's free already your queen is going to be free your knight's going to be free and you're going to be able to chase that knight so here would be an exception that you'd have to take some time and just think do i have the opportunity do i have an up and this might be the opportunity that you want to grab a hold of because it's it's giving it to you so that's a little harder for you to see but as you progress i'd want you to start definitely definitely i would be extremely tempted even without even being more patient than aggressive to take on this on this square i'd be okay. very tempted to take on that square all right all right so that's but that's not the one i want to stress out to you, stress to you so here we have a pawn move i don't understand this pawn move and i'd want you not to be making this pawn move why because you have one two pieces left to develop i want you to develop your pieces so this pawn move to me is um a non-development move even though you are threatening on the very next move a fork right and the reason why it doesn't work also is because even if he lets you do the fork he can always take your bishop with his knight and then run away one of those two pieces next so if this bishop were not at risk then this would be a valid threat but it's not a valid threat at the moment because it's still hanging or not hanging but could be traded so I don't like this move. I'd much rather see you develop this bishop. And the bishop can go here, here. I'm okay with any of those squares. Um, the bishop needs to be developed. Would you trade it? Sorry? Would you trade it? E3. Would I trade E3? Oh, at E3? You can. Um, this pawn move won't hurt you because it's towards the center. And But then you have to be leery. But you have to take back, right? So if you went here and he took, you took, and then he took here and you were to take with a pawn, that would be horrible, right? Because then you'd have double center pawns and you'd have double pawns over here. But since you have the knight to take back, yeah, you're fine. So I wouldn't go for the trade, though, because which one is your good bishop? The dark square. Yeah. So why okay. trade your good bishop for his? Okay. Right? You're up a pawn. And yes, you could trade pieces when you're up a pawn, but it's one pawn. Now, if you right. have two or three pawns, maybe you start looking at trading pieces. So if you're up a piece, which would be three pawns or a piece, I'd say go for it. But only at one pawn? No, I'm not ready to start trading off it. Well, if you're trading a developed piece versus a not developed piece, once that, I guess once I... Be, but that would be if that piece took this piece here. Okay. Or if this piece took the bishop. So if this bishop were sitting here and you took the bishop, you are actually then trading an undeveloped piece for the developed piece. Okay. If you put your bishop on e3, you have just now developed the piece. So he is then trading a developed piece for a developed piece and doubling your pawns at the same time. So watch what could happen. And then he's, if he's smart enough to say, go away knight, your knight's got to go away. And then he gets to take your bishop. And so now you have really weak pawns, three pawn islands, uh, double, double. You're still up okay. a pawn, but chances are you're going to lose one of these. And so right now it's very equal, very George. So I, okay. I wouldn't end. So one, I don't want to trade it because it's your good bishop. Two, I don't want to trade it here, especially because I'll double my pawns. So that's the second reason not to go there. Um, and yes, he'd be, but don't. We're getting the concept wrong if we think we're trading a developed piece for an undeveloped piece because you developed it here. It okay. is no longer undeveloped. So, no, that's just a trade of two developed pieces. Okay? Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I would have much rather seen you develop your bishop here or here. It would have been fine. All right. You can even develop the queen early if you thought you had some attacking chances because of his um, poor situation right now. Um, I wouldn't even mind the queen coming out because the knight's not hitting 
right? Then I can't come over here and annoy you because he's way over here on the side of the board where he doesn't belong. Anyway, so your pawn took. You did great job taking with the knight. Now look at all those circles. Those all the squares, those two knights, because they're right next to each other, are hitting. It's amazing his black bishop avoids being hit. But I mean, other than that, those knights are amazing, right? I mean, look at all those squares. I just find that fascinating. All those squares that knight is hitting. Those those two knights. All right. So based on that, hey, thanks for the tier one community sub. Thank you. Thank you, G Dot. Um, so um, five tier one subs to the community. Th wow, five tier one subs. I gotta learn all this stuff. Thank you. Oh, and you're doing it for other. You are. That is so awesome, Murph. You just got a subs um, given to you, a gift sub. Um, J.K. Jokey. Don't even know who that is. Welcome, J.K. Jokey. Uh, King Chess Wizard and the Modern Ancient all got host from G. Dot Host. Wow, that's awesome. All right, so back to the lesson. So all those squares were available because of your awesome knights right now, Murph. So I loved that you not only got the free pawn, but you protected the bishop. This is a great situation. And your opponent does what? Does not develop. Look at this very sad bishop. You still have two pieces developed, and your bishop is ready to go. His bishop is locked in, right? He has to move one of these pawns to get this bishop activated. His queen only has one square. He is very, his pieces are sad, Murph. They are sad pieces. So what do I want you to do right now? This. I want you to develop. And you did a great job. You did not allow him to trade off, uh, double up your pawns. You developed a bishop to a nice active square. No problems. I'm happy, 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 happy. Good job. His moves seem to be af afraid of knight moves coming over here. So that's what we would call an unreasonable fear that we would try to get him to stop worrying about and he'd be focusing instead on his chess. Wow, and my clock is totally wrong. It says it's 8 p.m. right now. So no wonder I had problems last night with uh, running over. Okay, so anyway, he plays e d6, finally, finally releasing the bishop. I mean, it took him all this time to release the bishop. Murph, what move do you think I want you to do right now based on the principles that we've been learning? With the queen. Where? See, I wasn't kidding. My clock is still saying eight o'clock. Just crazy stuff. So I can, that's why I was, it's still saying eight o'clock. And I think my, either the battery's dead or it's broken and, um, Sheesh, I, I would have been late for the next appointment if I looked at this silly clock. Good old analog. Not behaving. All right, we'll see if it uh, keeps better time. I'm going to put it down here for now. So, Murph, where would, you, where would I want you to go? Well, the diagonal is no good because the knight takes the uh, h5. The bishop takes g4. I think, or G, so whatever that is, I can't see it. Yep. So you've got, you've got like three choices here. Um, I would probably go with E7. With which one? E7. D E7 or D7? E. 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 Okay, Edward. so why E? Uh, it's... It's got diagonals both ways, and it's got this, the middle of the board. All right, so it's the middle of the board and diagonals both ways, but diagonals both ways would be the same here. So tell right. me why um, E7 or D7. What What is the benefits to D7 over E7 and vice versa? I guess D7 might be better because you've got the diagonal on the, the king side. Yeah, you, become, you create a battery for the bishop. Why else? If you know, think about the rook moving here next, right? So while you're, uh, you said you saw the center, but remember that's where his rook could line up, and we don't want to be lined up with the rook, right? Okay. Okay. And another reason is, what what color bishop does he have that might chase you around? Okay. 
right? You can't push the pawn because of the check. Oops, bad arrow, bad arrow. Because of this check, right? Right. All right. Yes, d7, good choice, King. So, um, yes, we want to go to d7, creating the battery. No bishop attack. Right? I'm still... Okay. And, and talking about the center, I have nothing protecting... I want to be able to push this pawn, maybe. Right? This is... Remember, pawn duos in the centers, everybody. Pawn duo. If I can establish a pawn duo, side-by-side -side pawns on e4 and d4, or if you're black, d5 and e5, that's powerful because they would hit all of these center squares and occupy these. All of these squares I've marked, Murph, six, would be in good shape for you. So we want this pawn up here eventually, in general, general rule. Now this pawn is already protected, the e4 pawn is protected by the knight. There's nothing that would protect this pawn but the queen. So if I put the queen on e7, I can't even push the pawn. I invite the bishop. I invite the rook. So by moving to e7, I am helping black find good development moves. You with me? Okay. While if I move it to d7, I'm inviting black to give me opportunities to sacrifice and, and start an attack which is fun, again, and if, even if you're not wanting to be overly aggressive or too aggressive, this is still fun. <laughs> this is still gonna be fun. All right, so, um, and we have opportunities, if we want, just sack here whenever we want. We have that threat looming over white. You can so give up the bishop just to open the king? Over black, I mean, sorry. Yeah, I'd give away the bishop for two pawns, two pawns, Okay. And open the king, especially especially if I can swing one of my knights back over here quickly or get my rook into the game, which means I have to get this bishop out of the way. But yeah, if I can, if I, I, yeah, so when would I do it? I'm not saying that you should, like, this is automatic. Definitely not saying it's automatic. Depends on the situation, depends on your mood. But this allows for that opportunity. And if he does this and you don't want to trade, you can either back up here. Or you could come back to e3, because then if he trades, you don't have to let him double up your pawns. You have the knight that could take back. Actually, I like that better, because then the knight has a knight outpost here and here. But the queen could also take back. So just in general, I prefer your queen on d7 versus, I mean, on d2, d2 versus e2. We kept saying 7 for some reason. All right? Okay. All right, so here I want to see you develop your queen. It's the last piece you have to develop, and I'd like to see it develop here over this. Again, here you got to say nope because I'm going to help him develop, and I'm going to help him develop, and I have nothing uh, giving me. And you need to be thinking about this pawn push. So even if you did that pawn push as your first move, I'd be happy because the bishop going to go back either here or here, and likely all the way. Because if he goes here, you might not even hesitate to double up these pawns. Isolated pawn, and, right, life is good. You have one gigantic pawn island, because you have all eight of your pawns still. And he would have three pawn islands and a double pawn at that. So he should back all the way up to here. And again, you might go, this feels good for me. And then you could decide. Because now your queen could come over here if it wants. Again, he wouldn't be under any real attack. He doesn't have to worry about a rook because uh, the queen's on there. And so you could move here, and that gives you all these options as well as future options. Or you could just still go here. So I would have been great. I've been very happy for that move too. All right, so what did you do? This is a move I just don't get. We haven't developed our queen, and we're moving the knight twice in the opening. And we, and I know you know, I know you know that we're trying to develop as fast as we can, not move our pieces twice, and you're moving a piece twice. And you might say, yeah, well, okay, but I figured if he takes, I take back. Obviously, you must have figured, at least analyzed that, right? That was the idea, yeah. But what did you just do to your pawns? Okay. Right. We, we, we do not 
We do not want double pawns. And we just help them give us double pawns. Why? My knight was doing so well. And not only do I have double pawns, but look, this pawn is no longer occupying the center, so it's not attacking that square. So now the only center square I'm attacking is this one with this pawn. He's attacking this one with this pawn. This pawn is like way past the center and he's gonna be a little hard to defend. And my knight feels kind of misplaced because he's kind of out here on C4, kind of weird place for him, um, for the for long term anyway. So yeah, I, I, I'm, yeah, not, not, I don't understand the knight move when we still have to develop the bishop, the queen. So what I want you to learn, right? You asked me about being stuck and maybe openings. I don't think you need openings right now. I think this game was beautiful. At this point, you played an awesome game. All I'd want you to do is find creating the pawn duo, controlling the center, chasing the bishop all the way away, develop my queen, and then just see how you want to solidify your position after that. Because if you did this and you said, uh, and again, you could pick, I, I really don't care which one. So let's say we go with this one still because you're, you're still dreaming of this. Um, and you're you're solid you're fine um he's gonna have to develop his pieces and he could attack the knight you could push and like just chase him away but i really like the pawn duo and unless you have a really good reason to give up the pawn duo i wouldn't so i might just say nope i'm gonna keep my knight thank you very much and wait to see what he does i mean this doesn't work you just take it with the knight um hey. You only you only like the pawn duo if they have things defending them, correct? Well, yeah, if they're under okay. attack. If they're under attack. So the queen's protect and knight's protecting. If they weren't under attack, if this knight wasn't here, I'd still like this pawn here. Even if it wasn't protected, as long as it's not under attack. Right, but let me, let me just say this, and this is probably wrong thinking, but I'll ask. Because you've got the two pawns in the middle like this, you're kind of forcing your other pieces to be there to protect them. Yeah, I wouldn't think of it that way. I think of it as because I have my pawns here, I am controlling so many center squares that my pieces have more freedom. Yes, you need to protect them if they're under attack, but the reason they're under attack is because your opponent wants to control the center also. Okay. And you'll get to push them at the right moment. So you'll wait okay. and push them at the right moment, but chances are you're the same way a pin starts bothering you after a few moves, right? And you just want to get rid of the pin on your piece, even if it's not doing anything, even if you're not using that piece and the pin, the piece that's pinning you isn't doing anything. So like they're just both sitting there statically, you still want to get rid of that pin because it's just annoying. These pawns will become annoying. Okay. These pawns will become annoying to your opponent to the point where he's going to want to do everything he can to get rid of them. Okay, he's going to do things like this to get rid of your pawns. Because you'll you'll just you'll be too powerful, and then you could say, "Good, I'll, I'll go here," and then you can move the knight. Maybe well, you got to protect this pawn, um, but that's where you start breaking some of the rules, right? You can open up your king, even with that long bishop, because you create a nice pawn chain, and that protects that pawn, so that you can then move the knight. Then you maybe could push this pawn, and you'll just have more space. The more space you have, the more the further up your pawns are in a nice protective uh, vein. The more space you have, the more freedom and speed you can move your pieces around. So, uh, King asked uh, about the yokel piano. We'd have to look at the yokel piano. I don't think it breaks the rules for developing fast. Um, I'd have to double check it, but I don't remember it having a... So gambits usually break the rules of developing first or fast. And it's really develop fast, not first, but develop fast. Um, faster than your opponent. But uh, gambits break that rule all the time. But right after you give away the pawn, free candy, that actually helps you develop your piece. That's the idea. You give away a pawn so that your pieces have more freedom. And you might even give away two pawns to give away to get your piece to develop faster. So gambits actually are based on the rule. Uh, I know the King's Indian attack has a problem with development because this Queen's Bishop, the dark square Bishop, sits there for a long time. But anyway, all right, so let's get back to this. So we can look at the Yoko piano. Uh, probably not today because I, I got to do this lesson, but um, glad. And if King, if you want to have a private lesson, which is, of course, not private. I keep saying that. If you want to have a one-on-one -on -one lesson, 
because it's this is not private. Um, Murph is definitely not having a private lesson. All right, so yeah, so in general, Murph, I want you to think about the center, but the other choice was just to develop the queen, right? Not move this knight again, offering a trade, doubling your pawns. So when you thought about this knight, whatever was in your mind at the time, which I'm not sure what was, do you remember? The trade. Why? Why do you want to trade? Because you have one pawn? No, I, I'm trying to take pieces off the board. Because? He'd only have one developed piece left. I'd have two. Yeah, but let's not, let's not, we don't want to do it that way. We want to get our last piece developed. And then, even then, when we have all of our pieces, so let's say we developed the queen, and let's say he moved another pawn. Right? So we moved the knight someplace. I don't care. And let's say he moves another pawn. All right, so now you are fully developed and he only has two pieces developed. Does that mean I want to trade off his developed pieces so then I have even more than he does? No, if I trade off my developed pieces for the few he has developed, I'm not gonna have enough pieces to launch a good attack. So I don't wanna give away pieces chest to get rid of his developed ones. I wanna use my developed pieces for an attack. That's why we develop fast. We develop fast to launch an attack before our opponent or one that our opponent cannot withstand. So it's all about okay. winning material or checkmating the king. So I either want to launch an attack that wins material or I want to checkmate the king. I do not, I do not want to win the race of development by trading off his developed pieces. And if you notice, you had to take back with a pawn. So, at the end of the day, you moved a piece that was developed already. He moved a piece that was developed already. So, that's a wash. But then you had to take back with a pawn, which means you didn't develop a piece. So, yes, you still have two versus one, but that's all you got, and it's his turn. And it's his turn. Right now, it's your turn. You're up 3-2. It's your turn. At the end of what you did... You were up only 2-1, still up by 1, and it was his turn. So you actually lost the tempo. This actually lost you the development tempo because now it's 2-1. It's Black's chance to develop. So Black develops, and now it's 2-2. You develop, he develops, you're squared up. He is actually fully caught up in development. Before you do that, you're at 3-2, and it's your move. So you are ahead in development at this moment. And if you do this, he would move his bishop, so he doesn't gain development. If you do this, you're fully developed. And no matter what he does, he has two pieces left. He has two pieces left to develop. So now you would be winning. But by trading your piece, where you had to take back with a non-piece, or a developed piece, or a pawn, any of those choices, you're ending up falling behind in development. So your logic of, I'm going to get rid of his developed piece so that I have more than he does, you did not change the ratio at all. You did not change the ratio, and actually you lost half a tempo. He got to develop now when before he wasn't ready to develop. And you have double pawns. So I, th I think hopefully that's enough reasons not to do it. All right, so uh, just allowing chat to be involved a little bit in our lesson let me just go bad um uh yeah if you if you see three d4 um that's the i don't think that's the yoko piano i don't think that's the yoko piano i'm gonna have to look that up is queen to f3 here a bad move and i take it um mystic soda you're asking at this point a development move so no, it's not necessarily a bad move. The reason I don't like queen f3 and we talked about a little bit is queen, the bishop gets to cat, uh, develop with tempo. You're enticing this bishop to develop with tempo. And now, you know, you only have one square. That's the other thing. I, I, I really, really don't like it when my pieces only have one square. That just feels bad. I, I, I start feeling claustrophobic. I don't like it. Right, so now the queen would develop to probably defend the bishop again, and we just helped black equal out in development. Because why? Because we put the queen someplace that he could develop with tempo. So queen to f3 would allow black to develop with tempo. 
and we just don't want to help them develop. So that's why, yes, queen f3 would be, in this scenario, a bad move. Oh, king says it's fine. But no, I say not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, very good. Yeah, king, you got it covered. Oh, man, you guys are, like, getting so good in chat. All right. All right, so, Murph, that's where we ended up. And so that's the biggest thing that I, I didn't like. I did like that you found, um, well, we jumped way ahead. Sorry, Murph. Okay, so we're back here. So I, I did like that you finally found the D4, but I wish you had found it, right, before you traded off the knights and kept those both knights on the board. You would have been more happy. I would have been happier uh, with your situation. This wins a pawn because he didn't, for whatever reason, he, was, he didn't want you to trade his bishop and have a single pawn. But the nice thing about the single pawn is it's still double pawn. Eh, okay, but he, gave, he gives up a pawn. Um, and then he develops the bishop finally. You bring the knight back. I have no problems. He pins your knight. Right? Logical. You uh, protect the knight. Now, if he takes, you got to realize, if he takes, you're going to have what Eric Rosen calls a cube. These, you know, double pawn side by side. And double pawn side by side, for some strange reason, become very powerful, or at least hard to break. He calls it a cube. So the pawn cube is hard to break, right? Because look at all the weird, you know, like if you push this pawn up, everything, will, the back pawns protect the front pawn. It's it's a strange configuration, um, but playable. Okay, so this is okay, but not really what you want, right? You don't want this isolated pawn with a rook with an open file hitting it, because now he has a very clean target to go after. And so at this point, I would want you, right now, I would want you to fight for the open file. That's the other concept we're supposed to be living under. Fight for the open file. And then if you fight for the open file and he goes here, you don't take and give up the open file. You just step up. And you say, if you take, I've got the open file. And that way your queen doesn't have to take back so you don't drop this pawn. So this would be what I'd want you to be looking at. I'd want you to look at, what do I do next? What do I do at this point? This bishop, out of the game. This bishop, out of the game. It's pitting my knight, but it's out of the game. He can't pile up on this knight, right? There's no way to pile up on that knight. He can't get a pawn there. So right now, both of your opponent's bishops are out of the game. Your knight, out of the game because it's pinned, but that's it. You have one piece out of the game, he has two. I'm like... I don't want him to take, so I'm going to move my rook so I get out of the pin, so I can now activate my knight if I want, and I'm going to fight for the open file. The only trick is you got to, if he comes over, if he comes over, you have to make sure that you don't just figure, oh, I'll take back, because then you lose this pawn. So then you finally develop the queen, and you're good. Okay, but instead, if I remember correctly, yeah, so there you kind of said, no, I really want you to take my knight. I want you to double up my pawns and create this bad situation. So he obliged. And now, look, he has the queen hitting it and the rook hitting it. All he has to do is move his bishop out of the way. And he's going to have two hitting there. And you've got to move your pawn. And you're going to have to forever try to protect this pawn that's isolated. It's your only bad pawn. Well, you have double pawns, but anyway. And now we have, again, double pawns. But, hey, we got this pawn. So you're still alive. He, again, uh, attacks this pawn because you have weak pawns. Double pawns are weak. He's attacking the one in the front. It's weak. Hard to defend. You did a great job of snatching the free candy because his candy was free before yours was. Now you have a big choice. Do I go here? Do I go here? What do I do with my bishop? You ran all the way back. So you can, no problem. If you go here, you know, he takes, you take, he takes, and he's got two attacking your pawn, and you're going to lose the pawn. Um, you could go here, trying to protect this pawn for the moment, but then he takes here, and he's threatening the pawn anyway, and he can always do this to chase you away. So I can't fault you for this at all. This, is, this seems fine. Um, but as you notice, now you start losing those double pawns. So then you did a good job here, and you say, well, I'm going to try to hold on to these pawns for a while. By the way, this one is a passed pawn. Agree? What do past pawns want to do? They want to push. 
So, so far the concepts I'm, I'm trying to help you with to make sure that we've got is center control, grab that center when you can, develop your pieces fast in your opponent, do not trade off two developed pieces, especially when you have to take back with a pawn, thinking that keeps you ahead of development. We're not just trying to be ahead, we want to finish first, as King said, we want to finish first so that we can launch an attack. So we want to develop faster than our opponents so we can launch an attack. And that is a very general tactic to do. The developing faster than your opponent is kind of like, uh, I'm going to check for tactics, I'm going to check for tricks and traps, and nope, none of those, I'm going to develop. I'm going to check for free candy, nope, none of those, I'm going to develop. Uh, I have no free candy, I have no traps, I have no tricks, I have no tactics, I'm going to develop. Okay, so uh, when in doubt, develop. Why? Because we're, we're still trying to win the race. But we're looking for all those other opportunities. And every time our opponent doesn't develop and moves pawns, then we will say, hey, if I don't see anything obvious, I'm going to develop and get way ahead in development and then look for all my traps, tactics, and everything because I know I'll have more active pieces on the board, more active pieces than my opponent. So, and, and then um, we talked about that you want to also just take open the open file when you have it. But here, got very interesting. He has now attacking this pawn twice. He has this free candy. He's attacking this pawn. So you could have, right, you could have left this here to protect that pawn. And you could have used this rook um, to protect the pawn. But you came here anyway, which was weird to me. So you, you brought your rook here. And all this rook is doing is locking that pawn down, blockading that pawn. Um, if he were to take, you just take back with the pawn and his queen can have it. So you could have two pawns for rook. Uh, you're like, yeah, let's do that. So I don't know why you put the rook here. You need to protect. This is the pawn that needs to be protected, not this one. Um, so I would have brought the rook here. Or even if you just brought the rook to rook. Even if you just brought the rook to the open file, I'd be happy. So yeah, you could have just brought the rook to the open file. Uh, but you, but this one is the only thing protecting this member, this isolated pawn I was worried about. Well, you took the one rook that was protecting it and put it here. And now this rook only has one square to go to. So when you don't know which rook, we always say do the one that the the one that you don't move has more chances. So if you had moved this rook, this rook has two squares. If you move the other rook, this rook only has one square. So use this rook. But you have the other reason that your rook is protecting a pawn that's under attack. And I still don't get this protection. Anyway, the pawn is so awesome because the pawn, you don't care. If they want to win this pawn and you're going to be able to take back with a pawn in there in between, you're like, go for it. I get two pawns for whatever piece you use. So you don't need to pile up on this pawn at all. At all. You just want to make sure you protect the backward pawn. Because that pawn has no pawns protecting it. So that's the pawn we want to protect. You want to protect the backward pawn in the chain, the last pawn in the chain, not the head of the chain, because the pawns do a great job of it. Unless he had pawns to attack it, which he doesn't. So that's a general rule right there. So we get to here, and again, he, he just misses free candy, and he misses free candy. And again, you're moving this bishop as if this pawn is the one you need to protect. So even now, even now, you could say, oops, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was protecting the wrong pawn, ha, 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 and you can move here. Now, it gets dangerous here because, right, if he takes here and you take, you're going to lose a lot of material. So that's where it's, it's a trouble now. But again, if you had used this rook, right, if we had gone back, if we used, um, let's say we had protected here, and then he comes here, and now he's still threatening this double attack, you could just back your bishop up. You could also, understanding that this is the risk, you could also just bring your bishop here to protect that rook. So that way, if he takes here, you get to take. Because then he doesn't want to take this way. He can't take this way, he'd lose his rook. So good news. All right. Um, so we have to understand the pawns and how we want to um, deal with them. And so here he takes, right? He just, he just gave you a free bishop. Don't understand why. Um, especially when he had this pawn for free, by the way. And this, he had two free pawns. He had two free pawns. This one with an attack on your queen. Your queen has to go away. And he had this free pawn. 
and he took neither pawn, he takes the one that's protected by a pawn. So now you're winning easily. He attacks your rook. You do very good. Just back away, staying on your oh-so-important pawn. Very good. By the way, you also could have went all the way over here because your rook holds that pawn easily. Uh, you do have to make Luft eventually, right? You don't want any back rank mates. So guess what right here, uh, John? What would I say you should do here? Besides making Luft would be an acceptable move. Making Luft would be good. What else should come to mind? Oh, let's see. If queen protects bishop, then I play f3. Uh, now the bishop is forced to go back, and I can greet gift still. I'd have to check this uh, actual situation, uh, Mystic Soda. Uh, f3 is always a little dangerous because that bishop had a check. So um, just make sure that bishop wasn't saying check, and you might be true. I wouldn't say it's a greet gift, though. Greek gift is a pretty specific type of sacrifice and uh, follow-up. Oh, and Greek gift with bishop takes f6. I'm liking that. Um, I like the uh, threats that, bi that bishop had at f6. So, yeah, I'd have to go back and look at that. So, Murph, uh, what, what do you think might come to mind here as an option for you? My thinking would be to trade the rooks. Okay, um, but is there an easy way to trade the rooks? Uh, the one that's on d1 goes to c1. Yeah, but then he takes and then it, in your... And your queen if he take if he takes, I take the queen. And then he oh okay. Then he takes rook and you survive. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. You could get away with that. Um, but uh, okay. Um, so you don't, you don't like that. <laughs> yeah. No. No. So if he takes, let's say you go here and he takes, you say he can't go there because right, you would take his queen. Okay. So I guess he would just oh, I can't go there. Sorry, bishop. Bishop warning and the pawn warning. So, um, yeah, he doesn't have too many great squares. Wow, he doesn't have many great squares at all. I kind of like that as a possible attack. Can't even go there. Sorry, we still dropped the queen. Wowzers, that could be a problem for him. I guess he would. He maybe comes down here and protects the rook, which is kind of what happened in your game. Yeah. Um, so the other thing, though, that I'd like to see you think about, actually, that is what happened in your game. <laughs> That's exactly what happened in your game. So besides trading off the rooks, um, I, you need loft, but you have a pass pawn. By the way, now he does, too, because he took that pawn. Pass pawns want to be pushed. I just want you to push the pawn. Okay. Right? Pass pawns want to be pushed. Push the pawn. And then what does he do? If he reacts this way, right, you push the pawn. Bishop's holding. Queen's holding the rook. Rook has to go someplace that he can protect the queen simultaneously. So, yeah, uh, you at this point, you need to be thinking, past pawns want to be pushed. I'm going to start pushing that pawn. So that's what I'm looking for you to notice is you should be pushing the pawn. <coughs> So, yeah, uh, Mystic Soda, I'm sorry I didn't uh, track everything that you offered or King. <laughs> um, it's, it's, yeah, it's hard when I'm doing a one-on-one um, -on -one lesson to cover all the different avenues. But um, if you want to take a look at that, we can. It may be now, maybe later. That'd be fine. Um, but now I think I'm ready for John to play a game against someone. But let's talk some more. So you got into this crazy situation here, and I believe you ended up winning this game, right? With some nice tactics, um, knowing end game, and now you're here. Well, I made I made this a lot harder on myself. Oh yes, oh yes. And now if you go, if, made, which he didn't see, um, so nicely done. Um, if but, you go back, so, back to the if you go back to when the queen, go back to when the queen took me. Oh, way back. Yeah. Okay, so we're. Yeah. Okay, let's do a quick. Uh, let's find that. So. Because the thinking there is wrong, obviously. Oh, yeah, your move? Yeah. Yeah. Here's what I was thinking. We trade the queens. He's so got to do it. Back? He's got to do it because it's the, it's a check if he moves the queen. Yes. But how does but he it take back? Yeah, you have to take back with the rook. 
Right. I didn't realize that part of it. Yeah. Yep. So that's just that's that is a what we call a combinative um, misstep. You missed the fact that you said to yourself, if I go here, I pin the queen. So even if he doesn't take, I can force a take. So I can force a trade. OK, that is totally accurate. You can force a trade. But then you have to look deeper and say, but if I force that trade, what happens? So if I go here, he takes. Oh, I take back. No worries. And then you have to take a last look before you go anywhere and go, oh, oops. And hopefully you spot it because it's a check too, right? Because he could have done that first. What happens if he does right. that first? Uh, so although he can't, so he can't move the queen. He can either trade it or you can force a trade. This is totally true. But the queen's protected. He doesn't have to take you. So if he doesn't have to take you, you need to look and say, well, what else could my opponent do? Well, what is if he says check? You move the king. You yeah, can't lose the queen. Choice, right? I mean, if you take right. with the rook, you lose the queen. Right. So he's just got a free rook, which he gets anyway by taking your queen. Right. But and now he could even say, well, I'm not, you know, I, I mean, you still have this pin on him. But he, I mean, he, had, I mean, he could take here and keep his queen if you want to keep his queen on the board. And now he has a queen and a rook against your queen. I know a bishop, though. Yeah. So, yeah, you'd have to. And so that was just a miscalculation on your part. You're forgetting the fact he has this move. So that's just miscalculations. And and you just have to, you know, take your time. You had four minutes and 24 seconds, it looks like, at least at the end of the game. I don't know how much time you had at this point. Um, so, you know, you had four minutes and 24 seconds. You spent, by the way, you spent almost two minutes on this move. So that's good that you took your time thinking about it. But you missed the fact that he could just take. You have to take back and you lose a rook. Okay? Right. Yeah, so so instead you'd have to find another square for your queen. And you had other choices. I mean, you had here, it still protects the rook, it protects the pawn, and it has opportunities maybe to get into here somewhere. Um, you can take his rook soon, right? I mean, you had opportunities. You had other squares to go to. Queen here, it just seems really simple. But anyway. So I want you to think about those things that we talked about in the opening, especially. Um, Mystic Soda, if, uh, you, if you're uh, not satisfied with uh, the answer that you may have gotten from others. Yeah, let's, uh, uh, let's go back and analyze QF3. Just tell me which move we're talking about. So when you see it, stop me. Oh, well, I know it's hard to stop me, um, but we'll see if it's liable. Let's clear those marks. So are you saying here? Mystic Soda, are we saying queen to f3 right now? Okay, further, good. So we get here, we get here. Nice move on the knight, just don't do it again. Um, and not, not instead of the bishop move, right? Still further. Right now? Are we here now? So I said queen to f3. Okay, and I said I didn't like it because you helped black develop. So what's your idea now? So what's your idea now? Oops. Oh, wow, that was... Uh, back up, back up. Okay, so boom, queen to f3, this variation. So, so we go queen to g3, okay. And so now what? Because black, it's Black's move, and I didn't, I didn't look deep for Black's, what Black should do because I just didn't like um, White's situation. I mean, Black's uh, White's situation. So one is to develop the queen to protect the bishop. Another one is to push the pawn to protect the bishop. Um, kind of like the queen protecting, but not sure if that works the way I want it to. Because um, I'm looking later for checks here also. 
Um, other than that, nope, I don't see anything that's jumping out at me. Um, pawn here is, eh, it could work. You can, but then you could push your pawn at the bishop because then he can't take because of check. So that would be good for you. So I probably don't want to do that. So yeah, let's let's just say we develop, which is what I offered in the in the time. Okay, so now what do you want to do? Oh, now you want to do F3, but it's illegal. So if you still want to chase the bishop, you could do H3, but you can't do F3. F3 would be check. Yeah, that annoying bishop is doing a good job. And if you do h3, which is viable, so you definitely could do h3. I think you get tax like this, though, would be interesting. Because then you'd have to take with the queen. Queen, queen, and then I get back the piece. Okay. All right, Murph, your turn to play a game. And your choice on your speed, you could do, um, let's not make it too long because everybody's watching. Um, and we're one to two, so we have a half an hour. So let's make it a game that'll end in a half an hour at least. So you could do uh, maybe 10 and 10, 15 and 5, something like that. How do you, one of those sound good? Okay. All right. And I want you to focus on not helping your opponent develop, remembering that d taking off uh, or trading pieces, I think you're too eager to trade pieces in general. Uh, don't trade pieces just like to get um, uh, uh, one, you know, keep ahead in development. Uh, and if you're trading pieces, if you're instigating the trading the pieces, I need you to really think about how the board is going to look after the trade. So is he taking back with a pawn and doubling pawns? Are you taking back with a pawn and doubling pawns? Or you need to start being, you, you're going to become cognizant of your pawn structures after the fact. Okay? So let's let's be careful and not trade just for the sake of trading. Just like you don't, you have gotten much better, right? You don't check for the sake of saying check. Don't trade for the sake of trading. Um, and don't trade so you stay ahead by one piece in development. That's not really um, why we want to trade. We want to, we want to get ahead so then we can use all those pieces in concert. We want our pieces to be happy and playing well. So I really like that your knight went from here to here to here and it was provoked because you want a free pawn and then you kept from doubling your pawns. But then after that, look, the pawns are still hitting the king side. We need one of these knights, at least if not both, to get over to the king side because they're over here on the queen side. Now, if I attack the queen side, fine. But otherwise, both of my knights are on the queen side. I would have been much happier if both of my knights were on the king side based on my pawns. All right? Okay. So go ahead and uh, throw a... Uh, anybody want to play Murph? Uh, Chris, if you want to play Murph. Um, if anybody wants to play Murph, you have to go to Lee Chess and um, challenge L-E-M-U-R-F. Otherwise, Murph can put a challenge out just for, um, like I said, a 10 plus 5 maybe, Murph. Okay. And we will follow you. So we'll watch you play. And then um, I will turn off my um, mic for Zoom. And so that way, hopefully, you don't listen in because I will be uh, probably cheering you on more than I should and uh, giving hints and, and lamenting moves missed. And we don't want that to be cheating. So, so go ahead and find yourself. Challenging your Chris. Out there. We're challenging Chris. Oh, okay. Good. And I will now mute my. Zoom. Yeah, he could play with a friend. Yep, yep. Can you still hear me? Yeah, uh, yes, but you can't hear me selling yes. Yes, Murph, we can still hear you. So if you want to think out loud, feel free. You can be okay. quiet. I'm too. still wait I'm waiting for him to accept. Okay. Yeah, um, and Mystic Soda reminded you, you could just play with a friend and put out a Put out any kind of uh, time control you want, 10 plus 5, and see who uh, responds. But I guess uh, right now you challenge Chris, right? Right. Yeah, we'll see if Chris wants to take the challenge. Chris, you've been challenged. 
You could, uh, uh, well, Irving actually left, uh, so you can't play. You want to play ran somebody random? It's up to you. Sure, you can. Uh, because, okay. Because they're not, um, if Chris doesn't um, take your challenge, you could just put out a random challenge for 10 plus 5. It's fine. Okay. I'll do that. Right. So we could definitely hear you, though, so feel free to, um, like I said, think out loud if you like. Uh, you don't have to. It's hard to think and play, so it's up to you. And just remember, we are listening. Okay, random game out. Well, G. Ho said he'll play you. Um, so, G. Dot, you need to um, get on Lee Chess and challenge L E M U R F. If you challenge La Murph, L E M U R F, okay. you should be able to get a game. Did you get a game already, Murph? No, I pulled back my thing, my random since you said he was going to challenge me. Yeah, G. Dot said he might. Um, it's on Lee Chess, G. Dot, if you want to go ahead and, and challenge him. Ten plus five, you can make it rated. It's up to you. So G dot, what's your uh, Lee Chess name? Because I'm not following you. I don't believe on on um, Lee Chess yet. You could play Mystic Soda. You could play anybody. Somebody needs to play you. None of them are on. Yeah. So I'm thinking uh, you might have to go back to the random until uh, until somebody gets on. Oh, Post Balloon. Ah, G Dot. I didn't realize you were Post. Awesome. Now I know who Post is. So yeah, um, you have to get on, sign on to Lee Chester. I don't see you on there, or actually I haven't followed you, so that would be a problem. I will make sure I follow you after you play Murph. So Murph, if you want to challenge post underscore Bologna, B-O-L-O-G-N-E. And he is online right now. At least he was. He still is. All right. I'm going to follow you from now on post Bologna. I'll know when you're online. P-O-S-T underscore Bologna. Oh, you found you followed the Murph. All right. Challenge him to a game. 10 and 5, please. 10 and 5. Post should be uh, challenging to a game. And Post will, um, or G Dot, which one do you like? Um, we will get you into the next lesson. I'm thinking I'm going to have to move that to next Saturday, just so you guys know. On Saturday, also, yesterday, we did a Spanish lesson where I got to learn Spanish while um, my good friend that was helping me learn Spanish, Sudak Uches, Sadaku. Zadaku, chess. Uh, he was, uh, we played head in hand together, brain in hand, which is always fun because you get to see how other people think. So, Murph, uh, yep, still waiting. Murph, you too. Uh, G Dot, if you'd uh, challenge. Accept, Murph. Tell him to accept my challenge. Huh? Tell him to accept my challenge. Oh, Murph challenged you, uh, Post. Just I found go him. ahead and accept the challenge and we could get started watching you guys. Um, so, we did a Spanish lesson. And we played Head and Brain, which was really good, uh, really fun, uh, very interesting. Learned a lot. And um, Okay, we're and playing. Learned from each other. Uh, it says, I, it said, challenge decline, not accepting challenges. Oh, well, I see the game we're there. running. All right. And so post, it says you have the game. If you look at my screen, that's your game. Um, so I think you should be good to go. There you go. We have a game. All right. I'm going to turn off. I think I already did. Let me just, nope. I have to turn off my Zoom so Murph can't hear me. And we'll watch the game. Awesome. And whose position are we looking at? Oh, we're looking at it from Murph's uh, side. So let's just see if he follows what we talked about. He said um, with Black, he has less issues about openings, that he's able to chess follow the principles that we've taught, and he feels comfortable playing. So let's see if he feels comfortable playing with the um, with the principles that we shared. So far, so good. And it's like you don't have to know this opening, right? You don't have to memorize this opening and memorize lines if you just play by the basic principles that we've been teaching. So it'll be interesting to see if Murph puts in a early D5 because that would be the center strike that I was talking to him about not doing in the last game. And if, and if white takes, he would take back with the knight, doubling up on the knight. And if white doesn't take, 
then he would have been able to push and win the knight for a pawn, or at least threaten to. There would be options. But Murph uh, developed instead. That's okay. Nothing wrong with the development, of course. Uh, and now the pawn is protected. So if he pushes, there'll be two on it, right? If he pushes, he takes. Knight could still take. If bishop takes, queen could take because the knight cannot take back. It's an absolute pin. So Murph still didn't push it all the way. So again, lesson for Murph we're going to talk about later is we're going to want him to push that pawn all the way to when he has a chance to get that pawn duo be more aggressive. Now he's trading pieces, which you know I just told him I don't like him trading pieces uh, for no reason, right? So he traded a piece again. Uh, post should have taken back with the knight so he doesn't ruin his pawns. But the pawn is towards the center, so he's going to be able to undouble it pretty quick. But that means he still has this isolated pawn. So taking back with the knight would have been safer. But definitely don't like that Murph traded his bishop for a knight. Uh, didn't see any reason for that trade. So no benefit for that trade. So now Murph has to be a little worried. He can't let him push and fork his two pieces. So Murph's going to have to do something like this to activate the bishop and get it out of the danger's way. Murph should not take the pawn because he would just undouble the c-pawns for post. This is a very interesting game for us to learn from. Uh, so he did take, and now he's allowing him to undouble. And as you see now, look who has the pawn duo. Murph went from ha being able to have the pawn duo to relinquishing the pawn duo to post. It's almost as if post attended the class and Murph didn't. Um, so, yeah, just the backwards of what we wanted. We wanted Murph to establish a strong pawn center, the duo, but um, he allowed post to do it instead. And, I still, and so now he still has this problem. So uh, at least he's attacking in through the center. Again, then the bishop could have went here and pinned that knight for a moment. And, but I would have liked it so much better when the pawns were still doubled. So now what should um, post do? Well, he doesn't want to trade because then he'd be messing up his, uh, he could lose his position there. Um, so this is okay, right? He throws in an attack. What do you do when you're attacked? You, the least the most risky thing is to attack something else, but it's attacked something of great value while this is only a pawn, so he definitely could throw this one in. This one is timely, it doesn't hurt, but what does it do? It helps black put that rook in the center. So this move actually encourages black to put the rook in the center. We are helping black improve his rook. So that's, we don't like this move. All it did, all it did that I can see is help rook black improve his rook. So instead, it, the bishop would have been better here or much better here pinning the knight, right? Pinning the knight would have restricted this queen's uh, activity and threatened to push this pawn very next move to um, win the knight for a pawn. So this, this bishop move was a mistake by a post. This was the correct square for that, for that um, bishop. So we're still not dealing with this pawn situation. That's a free candy right now. That's just free candy, right? Two pieces attacking, only one protecting. So that's free candy. And now we've moved a uh, developed piece twice instead of moving the queen. So while Murph has not done a good job of um, dealing with the center, attacking the center, right now he has the opportunity to win the free candy. But let's see what happens. If he takes this free candy, he takes back um, if you take back with the pawn, then he gets to push the pawn, um, forking the two pieces again. And we'd have forked pieces, but, but there's, uh, well, uh, there's that. Yes, the bishop can attack the queen, but the pawn can move up. So it still doesn't work, right? Um, interesting. Yep, yep. Still couldn't take because this pawn still pushes and attacks both of these pieces. So you still have the fork problem um, with the center. So interesting. That's why nobody's taken this center pawn yet.
So if the queen moves and doesn't protect this pawn, the pawn will fold again because the bishop would take, and this time the rook can take, keeping this pawn from being able to come forward. Hey, Chris, I love free candy too. So now, definitely, black should take the free candy with tempo attacking the queen. Bishop takes back, rook can take back, and he no longer has, and he takes with the pawn, because he no longer has, right, the double attack. Now, this black has to be careful because there are two pieces attacking this square if white pushes. Black cannot take. But this is nice. Nothing wrong with it. Um, but now he cannot... You cannot forget that the white knight is, is protecting. So this knight has to leave, which is a, not a big problem. Uh, it's got squares. It's got squares. And then he can hop over to here or here. He can even go all the way back home if he had to. He just can't go anywhere out here. He can even go up here with threats to fork this way. So, yeah, knight just has to move. He has to, uh, Black cannot miscount. Right, because it, before it moved, it looked like black had that square covered two and two, but now it's two and two with the pawn out of the way. So um, this situation is interesting, and now now we have some nice dynamics here of of some possible threats here for black. So we saw basically where the misses were in both of them, uh, not the free candy so much, but the chances to play in the center, and then this bishop was ill developed. I mean, it's got a nice long diagonal, but it's not hitting at anything. We want it hitting on this diagonal or maybe hitting this way. And that would be much better for the bishop. Ah, we hear Murph's dog in the background. We now know Murph has a dog. Ha! We learned so many things about people. So Murph has a really nice double attack, if you guys see it. He has, he's threatening this double attack, and he's threatening this double attack. And so the bishop goes back, not a great move. It stops this double attack, but does nothing for this one. So the knight could pop in here right now. And, oh, sorry, still has a double attack. But this one might have been a lot better, and here's why. Knight comes here, bishop has to take. You could take back with the pawn, or you could take back with the bishop. That bishop's going to sit there for a long time because there's no white bishop to chase you away. And after the bishop gets there, then we can look at trying to get our queen in here and checkmate. Checkmate pattern. And Murph should know this checkmate pattern because it's been used against him multiple times. So the bishop here and after the trade, he would have had um, this, this square covered quite well. Quite well. So this is okay too. He gets rid of the bishop. Now this piece he should trade. This makes sense to trade off this bishop. Um, and then he can win this pawn. But he can't. Yeah, he can because the rook still holds this one. So wins the bishop. This pawn might be weak though. He's got to watch out for this pawn too. That's the problem with queens. You know, they take back and this pawn in general, but it's not a pawn, it was a, a knight. So you, uh, hopefully guys, you'll see the difference that if the knight had went here, uh, that bishop would still be sitting there, not doing anything. Better position, though. And then the queen or, I mean, the bishop or the pawn would be sitting here. And if the pawn takes back, then this bishop's going to, um, actually, the bishop would be gone. So nice threats there, I think, if we could have gotten a pawn or the bishop sitting here. Rather than trading off that bishop. We want to trade off this bishop because it weakens the king. We traded off a bishop that did not weaken the king. So now that pawn is still hanging. Uh, he could take first, and that way he doesn't have to worry about anything. If he takes here first, Murph can take here. Again, doubling up pawns. Interesting situation. But also, if he doubles, well, yeah, he would take back first, and then this pawn would be have two attackers, and he would just have to deal with that too. So the whole flavor of this game, I think, would have been drastically different drastically different if Murph had chosen to plop the knight here and do that fork of the queen and the rook, um, a queen and the king, sorry, the queen and the king, and it would have been traded just like he traded it for the bishop, but he would have been getting rid of this bishop, and his king side, um, post king side would have been wide open, so a much better situation. So post decided not to take the free candy, interesting choice, and give away free candy. 
So that's just an oversight. It happens. It happens, guys. Um, free candy just happens. And we try never to do it. But what can I say? It happens all the time. As you can see, it just happened again. Uh, so yeah, that was that was uh, trading would have always been better, right? You just trade sometimes to get things out of the way. Um, Murph trades too much. Post needed to either trade or take the free candy down here would have been fine. Um, doubling up the pawns would have been interesting and dangerous, but he also would have had some counterplay. So now let's see what um, Murph finds tactically here. Because again, I, I like the bishop here. Because then if the pawn, if the bishop takes, pawn takes, rook takes, then you trade, and then you get your queen over here if you can for the checkmate someplace, sometime soon. So it went all the way back here. I definitely would have liked it here. Again, trying to get rid of the bishop. White didn't have to trade the bishop. He could have moved the bishop away. Um, but that would have been uh, my preferred choice. So now we get, eh, no, but we have here, we have three pieces attacking. So um, Post could have taken this right away. He shouldn't have waited, right? It's free candy. He has two attacking, one protector, another reason to have gone here instead. Um, so he should have just taken the free candy. But it's a, almost as if he doesn't realize he has two to one. And so he, got a, he brings another piece instead of, again, taking this free candy. Uh, again, he brings over another piece, but he already had enough pieces. So, would have much preferred that he had taken um, the free candy. Now Murph actually has, okay, Murph actually could have protected the pawn with a the pawn. Then it doesn't matter how many, you're, how many pieces you have attacking it, because if he's protecting it with a pawn, he's happy for that exchange. All right, so now we're in a different situation already where we gave up the free candy. Uh, Post finally saw it, which is good. He needed to see it. Oh, it happens. You, you click the wrong square. It happens, G dot. And I'm going to take the F stands for fudge because we're family friendly. So fudge. I clicked the wrong square. Laughing out loud. Okay, I'll take that. Hey, Brandon, welcome. Glad you can make it. From the UK, I take it, since uh, that's part of your name. I know we saw you the other day. We had a nice long conversation. Uh, let's see. So, yep, we got to see what Murph wants to do. And they're both using up about the same amount of time. They seem to be equally matched in this game. But what to do, what to do? So a simple move would be to bring the knight back to it, attack the bishop. Queen trade is okay for black right now. That shouldn't have been a pro that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so instead he attacks here. If white wants to take the bishop, he loses the um, loses the queen. Hopefully you're not listening, post. I see that you're chatting, but hopefully you're not listening. That'd be unfair. Um, so it's it's offering a trade. I do see a little trickery, which we won't mention in case G dot is actually listening. I see some trickery that Murph might be trying to set up. So we, we'll just shh, stay quiet. We'll see what happens. How's it going, Brandon? Mystic Soda. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, whatever. He, yes, press F. Okay, I, I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. I, I, I'm sure he didn't mean anything bad. <laughs> yes, and uh, in fact, he's on our list for one-on-one uh, um, -on -one lessons for the near future. Happy to give it to him. Oh, did you? Okay. Uh, you know, again, openings, you're young. I know you're young. Feel free to, to look into the basic principles, concepts. Concepts for specific openings are great. Learn the concepts to openings. You could do that. No problem. Yeah, I just don't want you learning. I don't want you having to study over, you know, hours and hours. So that's more free candy. Um, Post is, that's two pieces Post is giving away free candy. And it's just like he's losing his concentration. And Murph does not want the free candy, but instead offers the bishop up as free candy. 
So Murph had free candy and decided not to take it and instead give free candy. And I think that's partly because Murph is really stuck on this idea. So Murph should take. Yes, he does take. Rook should take. And then Murph can spring his surprise. And Murph has been wanting to do the surprise, I think, the whole time. But he should first take the rook. It doesn't matter. He can take the rook afterwards. So, yep, that's what, that's what Murph got so fixated on, why he moved the knight and missed the fact that he had a free queen. But he'll still be up a rook. Um, he's still up a rook right now. So I, I saw this a few moves ago. Um, when Murph put the rook, the queen here, and he, all he saw was, oh, good, the queen left, but oh man, the queen is still protecting the rook, so maybe I'll move here and get the queen to move, not paying attention to the fact that the queen was hanging. And so we get fixated on our ideas sometimes too much. So now Murph is up a rook. Should Murph, Murph trade? Definitely. Murph should trade that rook right now because he's up a whole piece, right? Now it's a good time to trade. And after he takes there, then he could take this one. And you could just start taking free candy. Good. Good. I like that. I like tactics. I like end games. I like principles. Practicing your principles, practicing your end games, and your um, tactics are all good. All good. And you could do puzzles on chess.com or on Lee Chess for all of those. Um, I know Lee Chess has them all. I'm sure chess.com does. Uh, so you could do specific endgame puzzles, chess for endgames. You could do tactics puzzles, chess on tactics. You could do opening puzzles, chess on opening play. So that's good, um, Brandon. Keep it up. That's how you get better. That and playing. You want to play people. So I see that you're spending like about two hours a day on study. Don't forget to play games. It's the fun part. And also people play different than computers. So you want to play as much as you can. Um, play those play those people. Mystic Soda, I will not argue with you. It is one of the ones that I, as you can see, I use their logo. I stream on Lee Chess. I teach on Lee Chess. I use Lee Chess. Um, I, I paid more money than I probably would have to chess.com for my Lee Chess membership so that I could support them, right? That you're giving, it's a support model. It's free, but you can give them money if you want. And yeah, Mystic Soda, I, I can't argue, uh, chess.com is pretty awesome, right? Pretty awesome. And if if no other reason that I want to have chess.com, it would be because they have Bug House. Because my kids love playing Bug House, and they don't have Bug House on Lee Chess. That's, I wish Lee Chess would get Bug House. If they had had Bug House, I'd say it's almost they're equal. Um, I do like the studies in Lee Chess. I think that's maybe a little bit better. Yes, sir. I know you're explaining the differences. Yes, agreed. Great. Didn't mean to say you were picking one over the other. I'm not picking one over the other. I, I, I'm, I'm with Lee Chess right now mostly because, one, it, it, I like their mission, right? Bringing chess to everybody for free. Kind of like that. I like teaching for free. Uh, that's why I'm doing this, right? Because I think it's worth it for everybody to have access to chess. So um, now the wrong move, right? I was just about to say, let's see if Murph remembers his endgame play. His endgame play should have been the rook here, keeping the king. Now, the king should have went that way. So if the king had went that way, he'd be able to try to fight these pawns. But the king went the wrong way, so now Murph is going to keep him locked out, and this pawn can't be stopped. Nothing's there to stop it. So imagine if the king had went this way, his king could have come over to fight, and Murph would have been having to try to deal with that. So the correct move for Murph would have been to put the rook here to begin with. The king would have been here, and the king just would have never gotten there, and we wouldn't have had any, any fears. But because he put it here, he did give the king a chance to come over. Yeah, uh, I think they are, Brandon. I mean, it's it's all uh, open source and it's free and they have developers that work. Um, a lot of it's for free, I guess, and they do take donations. Like I said, I spent more money as a patron there than I probably would have on Leech at, on uh, Chess.com and, you know, a long amount of input time or whatever. Uh, so this is interesting because Murph missed Checkmate. Uh, that's nice. That turns out to be checkmate too. But watch this. Um, Post put himself in a checkmate position right here. That's just checkmate. Oh, did, maybe it's not even checkmate. No, I, oh, the pawn was able to block. Okay. Pawn blocked first. But Murph had checkmate. 
here. And, and why is that important, right? You say, so what? He found checkmate. He's winning, obviously winning. Um, but let's say you're low on time. He's down to 251. Let's say he was down to like 30 seconds. Does he want to do this, this, this with 30 seconds? Or does he want to just say, oh, wait, I've got checkmate. Right? Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, um, so, Brandon, this is actually Didn't see uh, the check, a one more lesson on Sundays. So we review one um, viewer's games, one volunteer's games. And we did John's games, uh, LaMurph. So we do a game with, go over his play. What do we want to work on to improve? And let me uh, unmute for Murph. He can unmute himself. But I'm going to unmute so Murph can hear me. Um, so we have a, um, a viewer, volunteer. We give them a one-on-one -on -one lesson. We talk about how they should improve, and then they play a game, and we watch and commentate, and then we go over that game if we have time. So Murph did. Murph was our, our um, student today. So we went over a game. We taught him. We talked about some stuff, and then he just played a game. And since he gets to play a game, hey, Chris, so generous, giving out a community sub gift. Thank you, Chris. That's very nice. Mystic Soda, you've been gifted with a sub. Tier one. Wow, that is so so generous. Um, so we then go over the game. And so we're going to do that now. So you can get into the list of people that we'll do lessons with. Um, but those lessons will be on always on Sundays at 1 o'clock. I am skipping next Sunday. I will update the schedule, but I can't do it next Sunday. I'll be traveling. So we might do that one on Saturday, just so you guys know. All right, Murph uh, and Post, good game. Hopefully you're both back. Uh, yep. Good game. Uh, Murph, you missed a checkmate right here way early, and Post, you gave it to him. So if you look at it, the king will have no squares. You, we've trapped the king by moving it all the way up here. Um, you could play a game, but not in this lesson. You definitely should play games all, yeah, as much as you can, Mystic, uh, definitely. Uh, and you could play the guys on the stream. So one of the things I have for you guys, I'd love for you to sign up. I don't remember if I commit. I did not make a command for that yet. But I will. I'm going to create a command on my Nightbot so that you guys can go to um, LeeChess and sign up for Teams. And you want to search for for live stream. I'll put that in the chat. I don't believe capitalization matters. Um, but please go sign up for live stream and you'll get to be invited to tournaments and opportunities. Um, no, we're done with the games for this lesson, uh, Mystic, because now we have to review that game and then I'm done. Um, but if you sign up for live stream, one, I'd like everybody in for live stream to follow everyone else in for live stream. And then if you ever see each other online, you, this community, if you see each other online, challenge each other to games and practice all the things we've been talking about. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Chris actually gave the link. So, uh, Mystic, you could just click on that link and join the four live stream on Lee Chess. And um, post if you haven't already. I think you did. But if you haven't, Brandon, feel free to join the team. Join the team so that we can know. Uh, we'll see you. We'll follow you. You'll follow us. And we can play each other. And you, I'll play you even sometimes. You can play me. If you ever see me online, challenge me to a game. We'll play. All right. Thank you. I will approve it. It hasn't come in yet. But as soon as I see your uh, request, Brandon, you will be approved. Guaranteed, I'm going to prove you right away. So, um, Murph, are you with us yet? I'm here. All right, I'm going to move this to an analysis board. And as you know, Murph, I usually move them into a study so you can move pieces also. So let me do that real quick. Um, I, I do have about 20 minutes left to go over your game. So, uh, game study? No, we want the Murph study. Because Murph has his own study, and he's invited me to it. Oh, sorry, Mystic. That's yeah. Yeah, it is fun, and and you don't have to you don't have to be playing serious, of course, um, to play with us, learn with us, or anything else. You could just come and so if you if, if you enjoy playing more, so and just want to have fun, a good night to do that is Mondays. We introduce a concept. We have an open tournament again for live stream. We will have a tournament for our club team in Leeches. On um, here's your request let me see if i can um approve you i only see one in there so i don't see mystic yet 
Um, but Brandon will approve you, hopefully, and not take too long. Taking away time. Uh, quick. Uh, accept. And then, Brandon, you can look at the team, and you'll see all the other members. So feel free to um, follow each one of those members. And you can do that by just hovering and choosing follow. Hover, choose follow. You don't have to click on them um, to go to their profile. All right. Let's see if I can get back to the study, Murph. Unfortunately, my computer, as we know, gets slow at some things at some times the longer we go. All right, so let's go over this game. I just moved it into your study. Post, thank you so much for being uh, volunteering. So Murph, good game, good game post. And like you said, Murph, you don't have to know a lot about openings to play this, play against this, right? Uh, so Fianchetto and the bishop, right? The bishop had a hard time getting out. Why? Because we put our knight here for here. So um, post, if you're not going to counter pin I would say you might want to just block with the bishop to break the pin and then your knight would still be free to go wherever you want knight can still go here I have no problem with this in fact you are getting into well you're not actually in a king's indian the king's indian attack would be the knight here and this knight would be here so it's a vienna type setup but then you it's you just you just went to town so it's a it's a I thought he wanted to replace the knight with the other knight Right. If you take here, he's that's exactly correct. He's looking to replace the knight. And I'm just saying that if he if he didn't want to fianchetto his bishop, which takes more moves, plus weakens the king side a little bit anyway, he could if he didn't want to fianchetto, he could have broken the pin if he's not gonna count. Um but yeah, you're good. So Murph, um here you had an opportunity and actually you had it even the previous move, before the knight move, you had this chance. And we had just talked about, I wanted you to seize the center when offered. And I like this right now because now you have two pieces. Remember, we want to pile up. So that was an opportunity at that point to try to pile up. Although, right, he's just going to replace it. So, um, But, you know, he, if you take both times, he'll end up with double pawns. But I, I would have loved for you to seize the center. And then if he does something like just continuing with safe development, now you have a pawn attacking the knight. Okay. All right. So um, then uh, post, you would have to do this to get out of this problem because otherwise you're just going to lose the knight for a pawn. And if you t he takes here, you got to take here. And you're still, this is the kind of situation you'll end up with, good or bad for you. You got to decide. Um, but that's one way it could run. The other way it can run is when you put the question to the bishop, he might say, oh, okay, I'll just go away. And if you want to totally decimate your queen side, now look, both of them have holes. He could say, I'll just go away. And now your knight still has to move because of this. But now your knight can move to places that aren't so bad, right? Okay. But anyway, so I would I was hoping that you would try this move, John. I really was, Murph. I was that's what I was looking for. And so you did this. And then I thought, you know what? Murph could still do it. Do you lose a piece? No, because it's an absolute pin. Okay. And now the bishop's gone, if he were to have done it, which he shouldn't have. Post should not have done that. But the bishop's gone, so now this is a weak square to develop to. You're hitting the uh, rook. His best move is probably just to do this, right? Get, get out of town. Um, but now you have really nice moves coming up, Murph. You can't leave it here. The knight's free. Anyway... So I was, again, uh, two moves in a row, I was hoping you'd push it all the way and attack the center. But you didn't, and I'm okay, because you, right? You freed the bishop. So I'm totally expecting the bishop to come out here or here or here. Here, I, I don't like here because then it only gives the queen one square. So I like here because then the queen can come here, and then you have a battery to get rid of his bishop. If you go here, you have room to bring up the queen to get rid of his bishop and have a battery. But then you inexplicably, in my mind inexplicably, you did what we just talked about you doing too much of, which is trading off pieces. And his knight, which is not greatly positioned, you ent you are enticing him to improve his knight. Well, he took the pin away by castling. Yes, he did. But why are you trading? Well, that's why the bishop was there in the first place. No, to, to, no, the bishop was not there to trade him, to give himself up for a knight. Well, it's a pin. Yes, 
The bishop and the pain of John. Keep this knight from being active. And right. more importantly, the bishop was here to chess develop, get off the back rank. You picked a good square. Now, okay. where would be another good square for this bishop in the future? You know how annoying this bishop can be along this long diagonal, right? Yeah. So this bishop has a future right here. Okay. All right. So All right. we want that bishop here. We don't want to give it away. I mean, it's not our good bishop, but it's a bishop. And this knight wasn't doing anything to us. I mean, and all... We post you should have taken back with the knight in general so all it would have done was helped him move his knight that is not on its best square to a best square for a knight so why touch the bishop at all leave your bishop alone develop finish developing let's say you even went here because then you can get this now it's black's turn what does black want to do well he, he might pin you then you could chase him away because he doesn't have many squares so wherever he goes, you can say, okay, I'm fully developed. And I'm hoping to trade off this bishop and get my queen here. You remember how many times you lost games with the queen sitting here? Remember the bishop and then the queen drops in here? You had two games in a row we analyzed where that happened? Okay, yeah. You you want to take advantage of that then. Yeah, look at the, what's wrong with this. This is fine. If he does something to chase you away, you, you don't care. This is a great diagonal. Yeah, this is what we just talked about. I don't want you trading off pieces for no good reason. And you're supposed to be in a race to develop, not helping him improve the bit knight. You took a bishop that wasn't in a bad square. It'll be better from over here. But you took a bishop that wasn't in a bad way, and you took a knight that was not doing much, and you let, and you gave him the potential to exchange that knight and put his knight in a better square. Okay. So um, Pokes took with the pawn, and at the time, like I said in the video, um, in the stream, it's okay because it does allow him to come towards the center and, and open up his double pawns faster. Um, but I would have just taken with the knight and not given himself an isolated pawn. That pawn fell a long time ago, and then this pawn queened, but that was because of some other free candy more so than the fact that he has bad pawns. So now you develop the bishop. Great. Just I didn't like you trading. And now look. Now, now because... Right, the bishop's gone, the knight's gone, and he's just starting to push because uh, he's got this situation he needs to clean up anyway. Um, right, so now he's pushing on you, and and I, I'm not crazy about you being in this situation. By the way, I was thinking that you could have moved your bishop here, pin, repin a knight again, and get it out of the potential fork. And great would be a knight here eventually too. So even if he pushes, you're like. I mean, you might be, in my mind, you might be like, okay, knight's over here for the moment. It's going to come here in a second. So here, if you were to trade off and then replace the knight at some point, um, depending if you, you know, had the pawns to back you up, these pawns will be stuck. And there'll be easy game at the end of the game to win those pawns. So that would have been one way to play this threat. But you went a different way, which I'm okay. Well, actually, I wasn't crazy about you taking. I just thought... You helped him undouble his pawns. So first you 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 threatened you took the knight. So you got rid of a good bishop, not the good bishop, but a bishop for a knight, and he could have fixed his knight. So you offered to fix the knight. Now you just helped him fix his pawns. And now you remember what I wanted you to look for? Post did a great job. Post has the center pawn duo. He's behind in development, but he's got the center pawn duo, and it's kind of a wash. Okay, I, I, I'm not winning the development race, but I got my both center pawns. He's got all these squares covered. He has more space than. Well, I felt I felt I had to take him because he's going to fork me on my next move. Right, so you can move one of the pieces so that it won't be a fork. Okay. You could even move this piece so that it won't be a fork. Um, okay. Or you could move this piece. A lot of squares, so it won't be a fork when he pushes. You do not have to take to keep it from being a fork. You just move one of the pieces. But now, and, and to that point, did you change the threat that the next move is going to fork your pieces? 
He still has the same threat, doesn't he? No, I thought we cleaned up the threat by doing that. Okay, well, let's take a look. He's threatening the push. So you took this pawn and he replaced it with this pawn. Isn't he still threatening the same fork? Okay. Do you agree? Yeah. So your taking did not stop the fork. Your taking. Well, it's still my move. Pawns. It's still my move to stop the fork. It's not his move to fork. Agreed. It's your move right now to stop the fork. Right. So what it's do we your do? Move right now to stop the fork. Right. I, I, I. That's all I'm saying is is whatever you were going to do to stop the fork, you could have done it here and not fix his double pawns. Okay. But you fixed his double pawns and then you did something to stop the fork. Why not do that first? Even if even if that's how you want to stop the fork, why not do it right away? Why are we fixing his double pawns? Post made the mistake of doubling his pawns. You helped him fix them. So this is back to about not helping them. Okay? Okay. All righty. All right. So we get the take, we get the push. Um, and now, Post, you did the same idea. You actually helped Black improve this rook. And you only moved him one square. But unless you thought Black might not see this, it's not a good move because if he sees it, which we're going to have to assume he's good enough to see, we have to assume your opponent sees one move attacks. His rook is much better placed here than behind this pawn. So post, you helped him improve. Same that bishop being there was very annoying. Okay, it was annoying to you. I don't know why it didn't. It, I, it would not have annoyed well, me it, at all. It controls the whole diagonal. Yeah, but there was nothing you needed to put on this diagonal. Well, you got to make sure you remember to do that. <laughs> I had to make sure I remembered not to put something on that yeah, uh, diagonal. Have to remember. I think I think post this would have been a much more annoying move. And now you're threatening to push here and win the knife for a pawn. And he still can't, well, he could take. No, he can't. Can he take? I don't know. This is complicated. I guess he could take because here he can't take with the queen. But no, that doesn't work because then he takes this one. Either you double your pawns or you lose the bishop. So anyway, um, yeah, this would I would have liked this a lot more post than here. This one, you uh, again, you helped him improve the rook. The rook went to the correct file it should be on anyway, and your bishop was not in the game for most of the game. John said it annoyed him because he was there, but I just think that's, I, I find it humorous because John shouldn't have been going to black anyway. Same way as in the last game, the queen shouldn't block the rook. The queen should go here and do a battery and get rid of this bishop. So your queen belonged on white anyway, John. So I don't know, this shouldn't have bothered you. All right, and so again, I would have liked, um, you know, not liked, but this is a possibility. But I saw what you were, I mean, this is a free pawn, right? right. I, just, I just thought you should have taken the free pawn with the knight, again, playing chase the queen. You played chase the queen already, why not play chase the queen again? Well, the bishop would take it. Well, yeah, so? It's a trade. Yeah, so what did he just okay. do? What did he just lose? Probably don't want to take with the rook, by the way, because of the fork. Um, so what did he just lose? He lost that bishop out of there, which means that he has nothing protecting, right? That's a pawn that's been pushed now with a hole. So right. now you have a place to bring your queen eventually. Yep. So I would have gladly taken the knight, chased the queen, hope that he takes with the bishop, and you could take back, and now you have a pawn, and, a, and that's kind of how it ended up in a little bit anyway. But yeah, I think you would have been much better off. All right, so the push. And John, you had to see that you had two, and he had two, which means you cannot take. And you didn't. Nice move. Talked about that on stream. Nice move. Why? Because you have these two threats. So this threat threatens the queen and the bishop, and this threat would threaten the queen and the king. Which one is a better threat, John? 
Oh, uh, well, the king and the queen. Yep. Did you see it? No. Okay. I was focused on that annoying bishop. Yes, which, again, we have no clue why it's annoying you, because the only piece it could annoy is the queen, and you can easily put your queen on white. So it's I, just, I still don't know why this bishop is annoying you. It's restricting me, and I didn't like being restricted. How is it restricting you? This, this to me, reminds me of... I'll think of it this way. To me, this is a guardrail on a, a highway, on a, on a cliff, on a, a winding mountain road. And so, yes, you're restricted from going off the cliff. <laughs> so if, if their restrictions don't affect your driving, don't worry about it. This restriction did not affect your driving. And we've seen this before with you and others, including LLMP, where there'll be a night or something, right, that'll be like here, against you and you and you and you like do the worst moves in the world just to get rid of that knight and the knight is hitting nothing the knight is a guardrail on the on the highway and it's not hitting anything no problem whatsoever and you still get so flustered about this knight being close to you right if the knight's here so this bishop yes it's hitting a lot of squares so you just got to remember not to put a piece on one of those squares okay <laughs> meantime the bishop is not doing anything. That bishop should be over here attacking your king side. That bishop should be hitting here. And that bishop is way over there. I'd be like, good bishop, stay out of the game. And yeah, you, you can't fall you can't make the mistake of putting your queen on a black square, but okay. The white squares are where you want to be anyway. So yeah, think of this as, as the guard well on a highway, please. So you got fixated on this idea to get rid of the bishop. Really, yeah. though, you, you, the bishop you want to get rid of is this one. He's not scaring you. He's not hitting any squares. But he's the one that's protecting the king. If you can get rid of this bishop, you win the game. You get rid of this bishop, you can put your queen on a dark square. Yeah, let's go for winning the game over being able to put my queen on a dark square. So he moved back. He, he I believe he saw that. But interestingly enough, that didn't stop. Your the fork. You still have the fork. Right. Oh, John. Oh, John. Oh, John. That would be so pretty. Oh, the queen. Yeah. So pretty. <laughs> he, he has to take. And then you got to decide, do I want to free my rook? Or do I want to plop my bishop here, sticking that pawn in there almost forever? If I get this knight to move, right? I put my queen on white. I get the knight to move. I put my queen here. I got mate threats. I mean, wow. That should have been your dream. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm just dreaming of what could have been. So you went here. He protects. You take. You trade. And then um, I think you, you had a vision uh, coming up where you could win this rook, which was good vision. So again, you have two pieces on the pawn, so it's a free pawn, so you take it, which is good. Um, Post didn't want to trade, right? He would have traded, and your queen would have been sitting here, which may have been better for you, Post. Again, um, I know it would have been better than what you did, because from here, now the pawn is pinned. Eh, you can't really do too much else, but at least, right, you didn't give away. Here, you, you gave away the free knight. So this was just, and it happens. Um, blunders happen, mouse slips happen, things happen. So we gave away a free knight. And John, you did not miss the free knight. Good job on your part. And I uh, posted this. And again, you could have went here to get rid of this bishop, or at least try to. Bishop might have moved away. But you should have went here and said, let's get rid of the bishop. And that would have protected the pawn also. And since you're ready to trade, you should be quite happy with this trade, even here. You should be happy. And then you want to get here because of this pattern, remember? You you should know this pattern because it was used against you multiple times. So yeah, I would have much rather you come here, John, and just trade. When they have a fee and shadow bishop, and I know we've discussed this in the past, so it's not like I'm telling you something brand new. We want to get rid of the fee and shadow bishop because it makes the king castle position weak. All right, so then, John, I saw this which still gave away free candy. By the way, post, um, you had it as free candy right, right now. That's one, 
two pieces on it, only one protecting, you could have just taken this right away. Should have just taken it right away. Free candy. Take the free candy. Take the free candy. All right, so we come here. That's not free candy. So now we have three pieces attacking the free candy, and John decides to defend the knight. And you did take the free candy. Woohoo! We are happy. Take the free candy. John says, I see something. One, I think he's trying to trade because he's up a whole piece because you gave him the free knight. So he's right. trying to trade pieces. But I think John may have actually saw this, that if you move the queen, he might be able to take here. And if your rook takes back, he might win the rook. John, did you right. see it already this early? Yes. Yep. I thought yes. you did. I thought you saw it. And that's why right now you um, are locked in so much that when he moved the queen, you said, well, if he moves the queen someplace where I could take this and he has to take this, I get that rook. And you said, ah, oh, dag, the queen is protecting it. So you said, I'll go here and see if I can get the queen to move again, right? That was your you got a fork. plan, John? Well, you got a fork again, yes. John, with the you bishop. got a queen. Like, right, the queen and the queen and the bishop is forked. No, John, you have oh. a queen. I got you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And why'd you miss it? Because you're fixated on this idea. And you're saying, yes. ooh, I can fork the king, but it, it's just free candy, John. Or yeah. Free exchange. That, that's just the queen for the bishop, John. Yeah. <laughs> so we get locked you fork, in on things. You fork the queen and the not bishop, but you gave back that bishop. So, yeah, you could win this bishop, and he hasn't lost any more than he had lost before. Right? I mean... He, were, he was already down a piece, and he's still down a piece, but he could have been down a whole queen. And then, uh, post, I just take it, you missed the fact that if you take, you lose that one. Then, John, very good, uh, simplifying now. Um, don't know why you didn't take the pawn. Okay. Why don't you just take the free candy? Yeah. I mean, even if he comes here to attack the pawn, you don't want to probably protect with the rook. But your queen can easily cover it from here, right? You can even come here and say check first and then push this pawn. That might even be better. Check. Let's say he does this to protect. You can say, okay, life is good. Yeah, uh, you, I, I don't know why you didn't take the free candy when it was offered. So take the free candy. Now you take the free candy. Next move. Um, and so now, very good, forcing the trade. That's very good. Nothing wrong with that. And taking the trade. Now, John, quiz question. Where should that rook go? Open file. <laughs> not anymore, John. You have the only rook. You're not fighting for an open file. Where should that rook go? You're check right. the it, check. It, it I check the king. File, but where should it go? Check the king. No. Why are you checking the king? You you just said in our in our lesson that I don't want to check the king just to check the king. Why are you checking the king? You're right, king. So you're in an endgame. You have the only rook. You're playing against an active king that's literally in the center of the board. You have at least one, you have exactly one passed pawn on the H file, uh, A file, A file. All right, that's the situation. You have an opportunity right now to make the, the right move. And the reason why I want you to know this right move is because it comes in in other situations where you don't have such an obvious pawn advantage on the queen side. And the, and the principle is the same. So we want to, if you remember, restrict the king. So if we put the rook on the D file, can the king ever go across that line? No, I, th I think at some point we did do this. No. So the king can't go here. The king can't go here or here. Even if the king came up, it can't go here. The king can never get here. That king can never even attack the rook. So the king can never go this way, in which case... These pawns just go. 
Right. Now we know that. Checked, now we know. You checked, and post went the wrong way. So you ended up with the same situation I just talked about, but not because you played the right move, because post didn't go this way. Okay. So now if post goes this way, you can still win the game. I mean, you're still going to win the game. You have more pieces than he does. But you could see that if you start pushing this pawn, he can actually just come over to attack it. Right? This game, like you said before, excuse me, you'd be making this game harder on yourself to win. While if you chose this file, restricting the king from the queen side altogether, you can almost pre-move all of these moves. Because almost no matter what he does, this pawn gets stuck. This king, whatever he does, you have three pawns and a king helping out. You could pro probably pre-move all of these moves because there's really nothing he could do. There's no trick that he could play. You need to restrict the king. End game technique. All right? And then the only fun one was here that you had checkmate right now. Yeah, again, we're focused on the pawn. Yes, sir. We got kind of locked in. You had two minutes and 48 seconds left. You might want to take 30 seconds and just say, what if I say check? Because now he's in a position where the rook would be protected. What if I say check? Now, I didn't, I didn't care about you finding it here because well, I'm not going to say check because it will just take me off. But here, check. You did put in. You didn't have to do that. If you were fixating a pawn, you could have kept pushing the pawn here. There was no real threat. He pushes. You just take it. Right. So you took the time to push this pawn. So you did. You didn't say overly fixated on the pawn, but you said check, and you could have said one more check, and game would have been over. So again, you might say, well, what's the difference, right? I he's locked in, and yeah, yeah. You know, it's easy, but think about this. If he hadn't, if he doesn't have these pawns, it's stalemate. So that's another reason to find the one move checkmate, because otherwise it's stalemate if these pawns were gone. Now they're not, so again, you're safe. But fixating on one idea is one of the things we should get better at not doing. We have a plan, but then always look for other opportunities. As someone once said, if I find a good move, I should look for a better move. So you found a good move. Just take a second or two and look for a better move. All right? Okay. All right. Awesome. Good lesson. I hope everybody got something out of it. Um, oh, oh, thanks for following, Minicat. I like that you have cat in your name because we are the chess cat. So, Flavio, as normal, I will ask you to tell me if there's somebody on, on streaming that you would like to, uh, that you think we should go ahead and um, raid. Flavio is the man for finding other streamers that you guys might like. We look for clean, um, clean uh, attitudes. Uh, we don't like a lot of cursing because we have kids on our channel because we're a learning channel, learning stream. And so we're always looking for someone else that could benefit from a, from a raid and someone that you guys would like, somebody that you guys maybe can go play now, play on their stream against them and use these techniques and tactics. So uh, who do you got, Flavio? Who, who looks good for us to raid? I will even set it up so my slow computer can get the raid done in a timely manner. And I could take a look too if you want, but I'm always hoping you have someone in mind already. Oh, no, be quiet, please. I don't want to hear you talking, whoever you are. All right. Uh, Botez Live? Yeah, Botez. I, I, I enjoy watching Botez. They're fun, but very, they're malice. Oh, oh, I don't want my kids, I do not want my kids listening to Botez Live. Okay, uh, 25,000 viewers? That's a lot. That's not that small. We're small. Uh, 25,000 viewers. Small. Oh, you're good. That was good. That was good. Yeah, I stepped right into that. Yeah, she has a lot of profanity. Um, but like I said, adults, hey, I, I like her. She's fun. Uh, but yeah, yeah, not good for my kids. Chess Dojo Live we've done before. Maybe we should do that one again. That one's pretty good. I, I've checked them out a couple of times. 
I, I think they cater to learning and to kids. So what do you think, uh, Flavio? If you're out there, I'm going to probably push this to Chess Dojo Live. Uh, but I do like finding small streamers, which Flavio is really good at, because it feels good, right? You, you, um, you even raid with three people, but five, six, seven people to a small streamer. Just, I mean, you make their day. And, hey, we might find a diamond in the rough that way. All right. So we're going to go check out Chess Dojo Live. It is a good learning channel that I've seen so far. So take a look at that. Hey, Mikavoyle, Mikavali, Mikavali. I don't know how to pronounce that, but hi, how you doing? Uh, nope, um, we're not doing um, games right now because we just finished a one-on-one -on -one lesson. Uh, come back another day, uh, check my schedule. We're doing Spanish on Saturdays, Spanish on Saturdays, learn Spanish with us on Saturdays. And we are also, um, remember we have introduction of lessons on Monday. This Monday, we're doing a review of all the first 10 lessons. So jam-packed with a lot of information. If you missed any of the prior 10 lessons, we're going to get it all together in one time. Yeah. Crushed it together. So uh, hopefully that works for you guys. All right, let's see. I don't even see my little notice that should tell me that we're going to be going to raid in so much time. So I don't know where that is. My screen has frozen to the point that I can't even see my raid notice. Ah! I have no clue why. That's that's a, uh, annoying. Nico Veli. Nico Violi. Nico Vi I'm going to have to work on that pronunciation. Thanks for following. Glad to have you as part of the family. We are I'm definitely becoming a good family of learners together, so I'm very happy. I um, hope we can continue that to the, to the nth degree. So, ah, let's see. I'm still waiting for it to tell me that my raid is a positive going to go through raid. My poor computer. All right, guys, I'm going to switch over to my, um, I did create a game, uh, just as a side note. It's a card game based on chess. Um, I think it's fun. I think it's cool. Uh, but anyway, I do put a little tiny um, commercial as a dead screen for us when we're going in between things. So uh, we'll see if, going there will help me to see ah oh, good uh and it's going to happen in 10 seconds so hopefully that'll get us there and i can't even see it winding down <laughs> well at least the screen didn't bother to freeze up until the very end so that, that's better than nothing i guess all right let's uh close this window and see if that helps i'm going to close the uh, zoom we'll see you later thanks again uh, murph for being a uh, participant you're welcome all right, we close Zoom, and that should hopefully, again, free up some cycles. That's what we're hoping. So it says in 10 seconds, and it should have already been there. So fun, fun, fun. All right, let's see. Where is my, where's my streamy thing telling me that I raided, and hopefully we raided. Hopefully we went. I will see you guys later. I'm going to stop this stream. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We'll see you hopefully Monday. See you later. Bye.